Hi everybody, we're going to be playing Ambush again today. Ambush is one of my favorite decks of all time. I've been playing it for more than a year now. This deck uses the new Reconnaissance card to give you a lot of deck thinning and consistency. This deck easily gets down to four cards at the end of the game. You open up with the Dragoons, it kind of forces the round one, but Dragoons are actually better if you were to play it win round one and then force round two into a long round. Every deck that is good at carryover is also good at, how should I put it, not caring about who wins or loses the coin flip. I'm going to lose the coin flip on most of these matches. I'm just going to tell you that. So I pulled out my last Dragoon. You can consider this a mistake because I already have my opponent passed. If I had picked a Hawker support or something like that, that would have been better. Here I put Milena down. Milena is actually better later into the round than as an opener. Here I should play Morin, but I had a brain fart and played a Sapper instead. Give it a moment. Okay, there we go. Uh, Morin's great with Sap, uh, with Milena because M Morin will knock a unit down and weaken them. It usually will not kill. And that'll give Milena a target if there isn't a target already on the board. Thanks to my opponent giving me decoy, I can redo Milena. Get some points out of it. It would be nine points of value from that decoy, which is not great, but it's nine points on top of my Aglius, which was 11 strain. Now I can just pass. My opponent has to get over 16 points to win because I'm 16 points ahead. You might say, where is that 16 points? This is when Milena pops up. She's gonna be worth 16 points. That was a weak ale, but the ale is very revealing. It tells me what I need to worry about uh, later in the match. Many of my opponent's win conditions were expensed here. And they weren't fortunate enough to get the card that buffs all dwarfs in their deck. Because that would have been really strong. I'm going to open up a Teruvial. Why Teruvial? Because Teruvial is safe. I can play Teruvial. They can't really target or do anything with it unless they have a lock. And not everybody's playing locks. Uh, Radovid really is a pain though. So I'm just going to keep Scorching. I know my opponent has Ale, so if they have a third Ale, I'm going to try to stop that from going off and being worth anything. I'm trying to avoid Igni, that's why I put the things in a different row. So I won the first round. I got first game. Um, I got my card advantage back because of the way my silvers work. They're all really high value silvers that are easy to use, in my opinion. You really wanna use your ambush cards in the second round because they're easy to play around in the first round. Like always, they destroy or damage or kill my first dragoon, but they don't usually have answers to the second. A lot of cards deal seven damage in this current patch. Dragoon has 8 strength, so that makes Dragoons pretty safe. I'm going to use the Crushing Trap instead of the Azure's Thunder, because the Azure's Thunder can remove the inevitable Axeman my opponent's going to play. The problem with Herald is that he reveals what kind of deck he is really quickly. Like usual, my Dragoons force the first round. That's just what they do. I don't care that I'm two cards down. This deck thrives on long rounds. Uh, and you can easily abuse that. I'm going to take the Berserker. Why? The Berserker is really good against Wound. So I'm going to steal that. The Axeman's targeting my Aglius. I'm just going to delete them.
I don't care how long this round takes. I want to drain my opponent of resources. Because the longer this round, the easier... Like, he won't have anything in the final round. Like, he's not playing any, like, big tempo plays in the end. And I am. So I can afford to play long rounds. I'm going to get Teruvial out. Teruvial was probably not the best choice, but it's okay. I don't have a target for Bran, which is what I'm kind of waiting for. A good target, that is. Now I have a target for Bran. This will buff up the two other ambush cards in my hand. It will not buff the cards on the board, even though Bran says uh, wherever they are. It's a lie. <sighs> Tell you, a lie. Here would be a perfect time to pass. But I decide against it. And it's gonna it's going to earn me a great deal of extra points because I do it. My opponent doesn't have any axemen in that lane. Because I'm running Milena, I want to put down the Morin so that my Milena has a good chance of procking off something valuable. I didn't get anything super valuable, but I can still steal it. I believe that's the unit that uh, gets buffed every time your opponent gets injured. Anywhere. So it's like a better Axeman. In some respects. So my opponent had to go two cards. Now I have technically the card advantage, the reactive advantage, and I want to have the reactive advantage because I'm playing Shiru. I decide to put Isengrim into the middle lane. Why? Because he has an Axeman. If he's able to damage my Isengrim in any way, I want him to do that so that my Shiru can Scorch. He doesn't have that, so I'm just going to have to go with a Epidemic for one point. Epidemic, by the way, it is usually really bad for Shiru to just use an Epidemic, but you can live. This deck can play about five Scorches at max. You can play Shiru to get a Scorch. You can use Enya or Aethne to uh, Scorch again. You can re renew Shiru for another Scorch, and you can steal a Scorch from your opponent with Aeglius, so five Scorches. It's fine. So you might have noticed in this particular game, I mulliganed out all my Elven Mercenaries. This allows me to use Marching Orders to just chain into all of them. Had I chained in all into all of them, I would have been able to get my... What do you call it? <laughs> my, uh, my Illyrian onto the board. The reason why I play out round one... To, I like to play round one out to the point that I get Illyrian. So I'm going to play Marching Orders again. Azure's Thunder into... To kill off the Marksman. And I win myself a round. My opponent played two Marks. They were extraordinarily aggressive this round. And that's going to cost them dearly. Here I have a really safe dry pass. It'll give me the reactive advantage in the final round. There was a chance that that would backfire and I would have all my ambush cards in my hand. Now I can't really use Shiru effectively. Teruvial is just a safe place to put buffs. My opponent's probably not playing locks, so I don't have to worry about it. This is just one of those games where I can't really use Shiru at all. <laughs> just gonna put Teruvial down. Safe. Just really safe. There's nothing my opponent can do. I put it in the middle lane. 
This makes this reduces my opponent's options for moving stuff around on my board. This is actually opportunistic for me. Because the marksman is at 11 strength, it makes Milena easier to use. Not everybody knows what Mil uh, the new Mil Milana, Milena, whatever, Milena does. <laughs> and he was going to take that opportunistic time to kill off my Dragoon. Now you notice the marksman is at 5 strength. When Milena flips... She's going to steal the largest unit that has 5 strength or less. That's going to be the Marksman. Sans some kind of crazy thing happens. That was a... My opponent had all the time in the world not uh, to buff up his Marksman, but he's going... He's trying to deny my Teruvial. Personally, I think the... Because it does 4 points now, using the Dwarven Mercenaries to move your own Marksman would have been better. In most cases. Now I'm kind of upset because now his Geralt Ard is at one strength. I'm not going to be able to use a Scorch. And you have to use either a Scorch or an Epidemic with Shiro. So I'm only going to hit one target. I would have at least hit the two Dwarven Mercenaries before and been nine points. Nine points is at least I can live with that. <laughs> now I have the best Epidemic I could ask for. <laughs> Not exactly sure why he waited. Let's see why he waited so long. Uh, why he... like He could have done that in the other order. Had my opponent played... The Fire Trap, as his last card, he would have won that game. It's one of those things of ordering choices. I barely, I only won because of a misplay in that game. Now we're up against Francisca again. No matter what I do, my dragoons are gonna, my first dragoons always gonna get locked or whatever. Nothing I can do about it. This is a game that will really showcase card the importance of card advantage or the lack of importance for this deck. So it might have been better to Shiru there because I definitely going to be have access to Shiru later in the game through Renew. Here I make a mistake. I play a, uh, another elf and this pulls Illyrian. I could have just used Azura's Thunder. Because I'm up against a mulligan deck, my opponent has a chance of getting a Elven War Dancer to push onto the board. So I have to find a way to get back my card advantage in this round. Easiest way to do that is through using my golds kind of aggressively. I think he stole a Reconnaissance from me. Definitely want to kill off the Dragoon. Dragoons are uh, one of the most... Uh, one of the cards that just die the most. That's all I can say. <laughs> Here you're seeing the wonderfulness of... I'm having Elven Mercenaries. Ugh. So he pulled Yorvith with his leader ability. Or her leader ability, if you're going to assume. I'm going to play Morn. Morn's just unbuffed, so there's not much. Like, it's 14 points. Uh, now I notice that I can just pass here. Why? Because I have 33 points hidden on the board. And this forces out my opponent's Lyrian. Now we're kind of even with making the Lyrian mistakes. I could have uh, bamboozled there had I been more patient. 
So I push Milena out of the deck because I can just renew into Isengrim and pull her again. So they're both 8 strength. I'm like, okay, this is a great Scorch opportunity, so I'm just going to Scorch. Here's another excellent Scorch opportunity, but I'm like, eh, maybe we can get better. This is a hand buff deck I'm up against, right? I was inches away of losing a good Scorch target. <laughs> it's just that Yavin is only 15 and he has a 16 point card on the board. I'm actually wondering what he must have pushed out for that to happen. Yeah. I decide, let's not risk any shenanigans going on and get that thing scorched. I don't think my opponent's running scorches, so I'm just going to... Like, if you don't play a unit that big on your opponent's side of the board... And run scorch. Well, I, you don't you don't put a giant unit on the board if you have scorch in your hand. Let's put it that way. Now he might have scorch in his hand because he just copied into something. <laughs> he just copied his Yaven with summoning circle. Which is, I think one of the most annoying things. I, I he's like two cards ahead of me. Now I'm using Bran to help proc uh, Morin uh, Milena. So. And then Azur's double cross into a sapper. My opponent has to play at least two cards to get ahead of this. There's like, there's no way. He did have a scorch, by the way. It just took a lot longer for it to come out onto the board. Is that is that 26 points? Yeah, you can buff up uh, Siri Nova, apparently. Okay, well, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this deeper look into the new ambush. You might be surprised that I am still running Morin despite the buffs. I mean, the nerfs to her. It's mostly because I want to proc certain other cards with Morin, and 14 points is not the end of the world. And if I buff her up with Bran, then that's just another way. Then she becomes 15 points, which is also pretty good. 15 point silver, I, last I checked, was pretty, like good enough to use. So, see you guys all. See you guys later. No matter what you people say, I'm gonna do my thing my way. No matter what you people do, I'm gonna do my thing much better than you. No matter what you say or do, oh boy, you're out of luck. It's gonna roll right off of me like water off the back of a duck. Hey.